Even if you have tried herbs and supplements for pain and they didn't work, you can still eliminate joint pain by reducing inflammation and addressing root causes of issues. So the idea here is that even if you've tried these things in the past, herbs and supplements can work. You can still get to the, the root of your causes of pain and reduce inflammation, especially if you have the right professional guidance. So I commonly see certain mistakes that people make when they're choosing herbs and supplements. And I wanted to review those with you. So there's, these are some details to consider when you're choosing herbs and supplements. And first and foremost is quality matters. And so I usually recommend practitioner grade supplements, um, supplements that you buy directly from your practitioner or that were recommended to you from a practitioner. These tend to be more expensive and also you typically get what you pay for. Retailers just aren't willing to pay higher prices for quality products because they know that consumers are looking for a bargain and that consumers don't necessarily understand all the nuances of these herbs and supplements. So practitioner grade ensures that you are getting a good quality product that's going to meet some of this criteria here that I'm talking about. So one is looking at your fillers. You want to avoid allergens, additives, things like corn, wheat, gluten, soy, milk, artificial colors and flavors and sweeteners. Quality assurance, you want your final product to be tested for purity and potency. Uh, you wanna stay away from any products that have false claims that are claiming to treat a certain disease and going against FDA guidelines. Uh, where you buy matters. So I managed a integrative pharmacy in a really wealthy area. And we had a lot of practitioner grade supplements and I was shocked by the amount of theft that we had. And that's when I became aware of the black market, the market for stolen products online. So when you're buying your products from Amazon or eBay, you don't know who you're actually getting it from. And maybe it's not actually a stolen product or a counterfeit product, but maybe it just wasn't stored correctly. Maybe the person has lax return policies and they're reselling something that was returned and then they can't know for sure that it wasn't tampered with or that it was stored appropriately. So these are all things to keep in mind is um, where you're buying it. And if you're buying it from a practitioner, they, they tend to come straight from a warehouse that is temperature controlled, humidity controlled. That can be really important if you have something like enzymes or probiotics, things that are not stable in high heat, because you don't want to be spending a lot of money for supplements that are not going to be potent when they get to you because everything was killed off. Um, so really important to keep in mind where you are buying these, um, these products and supplements. Dose and duration are really important. That's probably some of them. One of the most common things I see is that people don't take a high enough dose for a long enough time to have an effect. So being realistic about the dose that you need and the duration and the potency of the product as well. Sometimes you'll have a product that has a ton of ingredients on it, but none of the ingredients are really at a high enough potency to do anything. So you want to make sure that you have a high potency product. And this could mean that you have to take several capsules in order to get a high enough dose for you as well. They can't always fit everything that they need into one capsule. You want to make sure that herbs are extracted from the right part of the plant. Um, correct supplement for the disease and the person. Just because you see on Facebook that somebody took the supplement and it worked for them doesn't mean it's going to work for you because you're an individual person with individual factors that you have to consider. And it could be a absorption issue. Maybe you have gut issues, you have a harder time absorbing, so you need a different formulation. Um, looking at the bioavailability of products is important. Also, if it's biologically active, some people have gene mutations and they can't take certain forms, their body won't be able to activate them. So they need to take the product in an activated form. So these are all things to consider is we're not just treating the disease, we're treating the person as a whole and what factors are important for you. There's also just some little known supplements that are still out there. There's some things that I use that other practitioners haven't heard of. Doctors are not really well-trained in natural approaches a lot of the time. Um, so sometimes people just might not realize. Um, there are natural remedies that your body recognizes and is able to metabolize without seeing it as a toxin. There are supplements that work on a cellular level that I like to use that support your body in functioning better instead of just masking symptoms. Um, so it could just be that you haven't tried some of the right things. 
And then other lifestyle factors. This is always what I come back to is you have to address other things in your life. If you're continuing to do things that make you inflamed while you're taking anti-inflammatories, you're just not going to have as big of an impact.